The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today. Performance Auto Care Center in the heart of YPO Gentry. From detailed engine computer diagnosis to tune-ups, transmissions, electrical, brakes, even safety checks. If your car has a problem, we have the solution. Napa Auto Care Center is who we turn to when it comes to quality parts for our valued customers. Quality, knowledge, and service to our customers is job one. In these economic times, you need affordable help for every aspect of your vehicle. People you can trust. Performance Auto Care Center, 676-1077. Flowers are an expression of our lives, touching our senses in beautiful harmony, creating moments in time that express love, empathy, celebration, happiness, and the spirit of aloha, making beautiful memories that open the windows to our soul. Express your feelings through flowers. Watanabe Floral, serving Hawaii's families since 1945. You're watching KWHE TV 14 Honolulu, KWHD TV 14 Hilo, and KWHM TV 21 Wailuku, Hawaii's Ohana TV. people out there I hope you are having a great Friday thank God it's Friday right <laughs> and we're going to have a good day here in the Lord and today I'm really going to talk to the ladies so I'm going to try to give you a little uplift you know we women always need a little uplift and everything and then we feel better and I have some I, I know my last show, I read so much, it probably bored you. So I'm going to try to just read a little bit, and then I'm going to talk to my daughter, Michelle, my co-host, and then I'm going to talk to my singer, uh, Angela Heard, and we're going to talk, and she's going to sing for you a beautiful song called Healer. But first, I want to talk personally to you. I kind of want to break the television glass and talk story with you a little bit. My little poem is written here. Lord, help me. Lord, keep my heart clean with nothing to hide. Putting away all my arrogance and pride. Yeah, I got arrogance. I've been through that trip of arrogance. I've been here and there and everywhere with arrogance, all right? With my husband, I traveled a lot, cruised a lot, got a lot of arrogance and pride down inside of me and I had to get all of that out. Once Jesus Christ comes in, that stuff's got to go out because it doesn't help anything when you are so proud of yourself and what you've done. It's being proud of what Christ has done in our lives, happy with what He's done, the Holy Spirit's done. 
Lord, keep my mouth full, dripping with sweet honey, to speak precious words worth more than money. Precious, pleasant words and the law of kindness in our mouth is worth more than money. And honey, I've had money too. And boy, can I spend money. I know all about it. I've been there and done that. But I found there's nothing like the riches of Christ. Being in Christ Jesus is the best thing you'll ever have in your whole life. Don't wait till you're 75 or 76, though, to learn that. Learn it before my age, okay? Lord, may I show more your merciful side to forgive and forget offenses and never to chide. To forget an offense is really got to be a supernatural act of God that comes into you because we all have offenses that come. Sometimes you get an offense and you put yourself a little fence around you and around other people so you don't bump into them because you're offended. Just their presence offends you and you know that's not good because the word of God, as I told my daughter, it says do not dislike people. So I have to roll it back and say, Lord, I cannot dislike people and be on the television and say, God bless you, you guys, and I love you. If I have dislike in my heart, and if I have unforgiveness in my heart, and offenses, man, that was easy. Jump over the offenses, huh? Over the fences in your life. Get over it and give it to God. And once you do, you'll live a lot happier life because it says in the Word, don't let any root of bitterness go down into your heart because it will destroy, it will affect the spiritual attitude. So they were talking, the Word was talking to et moi, to me as a Christian, that I can't be full of offenses and I can't chide people. Do you know the Lord loves us so much sometimes He never even chides you? But it's the Holy Spirit that guides you. The Holy Spirit will come in and convict your heart, but never, never condemn your heart. He will never condemn your heart. That's Satan's job, to condemn you, all right? And we like to condemn him back where he came from. Go back in your den and stay down there. Don't come up and accuse the brethren and the sistren before the Lord. You know, he takes us up before the Lord. He says, look at what she's doing now, that big mouth Phyllis down there. Hey, she's not using it for prophecy, but she's using it for maybe gossip. And the Lord says, uh, uh don't touch my servant. I know her heart. I know she's sorry. And I know she's trying not to gossip and bear tales and wounds. You know, a tale bearer puts, that means somebody who bears tales talks about it puts big wounds in other people when they talk about them. I'm just giving you the rim of the word or the rim of the word. It's how I see it and how I try to live it. Lord, may I show more your merciful side. If I'm merciful to people, maybe God will be merciful to me. If I don't judge, maybe then God won't judge me so hard, especially when I come up to the big white throne one day. And he says, okay, what'd you do for me? And I says, oh, well, Lord, you know, I did a lot of signs and wonders and, and miracles. It, it, no, no, Jesus said, what did you do for me on earth for me? Did you love my people? <gasps> or did you always find fault with everybody and everything, including your husband and your children? Did you live a peaceable life? Did you try? Did you try with the help of the Holy Spirit? And the Lord says, He puts that Holy Spirit in us to help us to obey what He calls us to do. So we got it made, folks. The Holy Spirit, if we listen, will tell us how to obey God's commandments, the Word of God. Lord, keep my words light, happy, and sunny. Help others to laugh and see things funny. Don't be such an uptight Christian that you can't laugh at things and laugh at yourself. Don't laugh at people. I don't do that unless they ask me to laugh with them. God loves a cheerful heart and he loves to hear our laughter and sometimes he makes good jokes even on us. And you're laughing, you say, you know, Lord, you're right. 
have a good laugh. And don't take yourself so serious. I mean, you know, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes, right, <laughs> Michelle? You guys all remember Michelle? <laughs> Every time I meet people on the street, they say, hey, I, who are you? Is, are you that lady on TV? <laughs> And they don't know my name, but they know they're that lady on TV. Probably they'll say that lady with all the circus around her because I have everything, Japanese, Chinese, everything around because I speak in I bet you didn't know that I could speak in Chinese with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, you guys, you know, I want to pick you up a notch in what God is doing in the islands and what God is doing in the world. He's bringing the army of the Lord together. Men, women, boys and girls, and especially the young people. Boy, are they getting revved up. And they are so full of talent. And God, and our sister Angela here, you have got so many children. She's like the little lady in the shoe. She had so much kids, she doesn't know what to do because she has brought through, she and her husband, Pastor Hurd, who sons of Essekar, who is on Olelo, that's all right for me to say. And they have brought over 65. Over 65. Oh, yeah, the last time I counted, it was about 60. Some 62. Home yes, ma'am. Take care of. Yes. Girl, I say, <laughs> you have done it. You have won the mother of the year, for as far as I'm concerned. Yes. If there isn't anything I couldn't ask you that you couldn't answer. You know everything about everything. And the one thing I love about your children, because Pastor Hurd and Angela Hurd are in my church, and we have a good time together. One thing I know about your children is they love the Lord. One of them, maybe many of them, are very anointed in God and following along in your footsteps. Yes. Yeah. And your husband's on TV, and your son will be on TV again. And maybe, you know, this is a new step for you to come in to be with us girls. And we're gonna to talk to a lot about The View. But first I wanna say, gentle lady resting before my face, the Lord is saying this to you, gentle lady resting before my face, rise up my love and take your place. You have a place in this world. God has called you to that place. Rise up, be all you're assigned to be. Rise up and be all that you're designed to be. You were designed to be a great, lady in the Lord. Notice I didn't say woman because I don't like the, oh, she's just a woman. I don't like that. That's why I say in my book, you know, my little spiritual book here like this, a lady prophet speaks out of Hawaii because I want to be a lady in every way, shape and form. Okay, you guys, that's with my mouth and the things I say with my mouth and the things I do so they don't go south, all right? <clears throat> Rise up with the old gospel story. Take it now from glory to glory. Carry the whole world in your breast. Go forth and bring perfect peace and rest. It says that a woman has the law of kindness in her mouth and all her ways are ways of pleasantness in the words of God. So do you want to have a tombstone that's written and says, all her ways were ways of pleasantness, and all her words were words of kindness to her husband. I know I had so many children myself that, you know, I'd be upset before I answer the phone, and the kids would be, yeah, yeah, on me, and, and all, and the phone, and I'd pick up the phone and say, hello, just like I didn't have any problems. Yes, and I'd be kicking one kid away here and pushing one away there because they always want you on the phone. But I was a different person on the phone because after all, I was a Christian lady and a prophetess and <clears throat> I didn't want people to know that I yelled at my kids. Oh, you never yelled at your kids? Oh, I don't believe that. <clears throat> Maybe you yell silently. Yeah, Shell, you never yell at your kids. We never yell at our kids, right? <laughs> well. <laughs> Listen, after I had children, I was a real sweet wife. Then after I had children, I was like a fisherman's wife, fishmonger's wife, somebody who was yelling at the kids all the time. I used to be real sweet. And then, of course, now my kids are all grown up and gone, and it's wonderful. And I just want to say a few words about the Lord gave this prophecy to the women at a women's luncheon. We had a nice little luncheon, and 
Cheryl Glaser's home. Her her daughter was Mrs. Hawaii or Miss Hawaii. And this is what the Lord said, my daughters, you are living, breathing examples of my greatest handiwork. This is God talking now, of the Holy Spirit talking through my mouth to them, all right? There is no one like you in my creation. I like that. You are each a precious one-of-a-kind woman with personal worth and uniqueness in my universe. I like that. You are complete in my son, Jesus Christ, and headed for heaven. I like that even better. I have always known you, my daughter, and loved you. And he's talking to you now, because he's talking to all the women. I have always known you, my daughter, and loved you. You are on my mind constantly. I don't know anybody else in the world who keeps me constantly on their mind. Only God, he keeps us personally and constantly on his mind. Every blonde hair that's dyed is on his mind. Everything is on the mind of the Lord. He's interested in us. He said, nothing can separate you from my love, your heavenly father. Isn't that a beautiful word to give to the women? Beloved, <clears throat> excuse me, rise up and fly with all of your might. Do what God shows you. Fly the good flight, the grand flight. That's your life, the flight that God's called you, your destiny. Yeah, I like that music behind me. Not too loud, though. Not too loud, not too soft, just right, okay? God gave you wings of power and might, so rise up, beloved, and take heavenly flight. That's what's happening with the women now. They're rising up in the Lord and taking heavenly f flight. They're not fighting anymore. They're rising up. It's His voice, God, you hear, calling through the night. It's His loving arms you feel holding you tight at night. Some of you don't have a husband or a friend or mama or a dad that holds you when you have your nightmares at night. But God's Spirit and Jesus Christ the Son will come, put their hands on your, His hand on your head and your brow, put your hand, His hand on your heart and make you to feel peace again. Many of you are not feeling peace right now. We're going to talk story in just a moment, the three of us, and we're just going to get into it like the view. But before I do that, I want you to know it's God's voice you hear calling you through the night. It's His arms holding you tight, all right? Strengthen your wings now, dear little bird, before you, before your life passes by. Don't stagnate in life's pond, but rise up and fly. God has called you to be his beautiful swan, so rise up, my love, I pray, carry on. Behold, the spirit of prophecy was upon me, wings to fly, and I want to read it to you, and then we're going to talk story. Beloved, I seek to free you from the tormentor of your soul. That's the enemy, that's the devil who comes and torments your soul. There is a bondage that could latch onto the Christian that is moving, moving in the will of God. The more you move into the will of God and go up into the will of God, the more the enemy hates you. Sorry, but that's real. The enemy hates godly people, godly men, godly women. And when he sees them rising up to fly, He's going to give them ungodly problems. There will be a way made out for you, my beloved child. The will of the Father is to see you whole. You don't feel whole today. You don't feel right. I know. I understand. I've been there recently. But the Lord will make you whole again. Call on him. The enemy would like to clip the wings of the bird that flies high. 
The Spirit of the Lord gives you wings to fly above any and all situations when the enemy seeks to keep you earthbound. A bird must fly. It is in worse danger if it stays on the ground, for many creatures are there lurking to catch that grounded bird. I will give you wings to fly, and my Holy Spirit wind will blow you, and the wind beneath your wings. Be healed in the name of Jesus, little bird, for I will sprout you new feathers and give you new strength. Arise now and soar with your Lord. The enemy cannot keep you grounded or captive because he who the Son has set free is free indeed. For I can do everything God asks me to do with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. Folks, God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind. My dear Angela, I cannot imagine having 65 kids running through my house, not all at one time, right? but in groups. In groups. Um, How did you and your husband decide to do that? Well, actually, it, our journey into helping Hawaii's youth started off in a more, with a more tragic story. I don't think I ever told you, but um, me and my husband had lost, actually, we had lost two babies. This, the last baby that we had lost, I had carried her full term. Oh. And we ended up having to medevac her to California where she eventually passed away. And it was during that time, after that loss, it was like the greatest loss of my life that I started going into the hospitals and... Talk, uh, talk into that camera. It was during that time, during the most tragic time of my life when I started going through, you know, to hospitals, you know, just wanting to, like, help fill that void, fill the void, you know, of that loss of my of my little girl. And that's actually what started our journey into foster care. Um, me and my husband um, decided to go ahead and take the class. And, um, and it, it, was, it, was, it, it started out tragically, but God actually, it ended up being a great blessing because, because of that one loss, God allowed us to bring in over 65 children into our home from the ages of zero all the way to 18 years old. That was true though, you said you lost. Yes, ma'am. So was it a boy and a girl? Or? It was two girls. Two girls. Yes. And they're waiting for you in yes, heaven. Yes, ma'am. They were waiting for me in heaven. But it was a it was a it was a great exchange because because of those two laws, I was still able. God gave me sixty five more in yes, in their place, and and we're still bringing in children. We we presently have um, seven children at home right now. And you're doing um, a wonderful job. Yes, my three job. and four others. Yes. Wonderful job. We lost one, and then I had two more. Right, right. So God has a plan we don't understand exactly. always. Exactly, yes. When we go through the water and the fires, but he causes it to work out for good. Yes, yes. So when did you find the Lord? You found him long before you had those miscarriages? Um, yes, ma'am. I was so blessed to have a godly heritage and um, godly parents. My dad was, is a, was a Pentecostal pastor, and he raised me, um, raised me up in church. I was born in church, raised, raised, I was. You mean you're as crazy as I am? Yes, ma'am. I didn't know you had a Pentecostal dad. Yes, ma'am. I know yes. all the nuts and the bolts about Pentecostal. Uh -huh. yes. And we are crazy wild in love with the Lord. I'll bet you had a wonderful dad, too. I had a wonderful father. He was a really, I always said that my dad lived what he preached. And I couldn't say that about a lot of people or men that I met. But what he did behind the pulpit, he also demonstrated at home. He was oh, a God. great example for us. Oh, to God that we all did that. Whatever we say out in public, we do at home. Yes. And we try to be that with our children and our husbands and family. So you had found the Lord before you met Pastor Hurd? Yes, ma'am. I, I well, I've always had like this desire for God. You know, um, as my dad was bringing us up in the Lord and we were going through church and we were around the Holy Spirit and the fire, yeah. uh, we would have um, even prayer meetings and I would sometimes be the only child at 12 and 13 years old at the prayer meetings. And for some reason, I, I felt like, you know, God had called me at a very early age and I've always had a hunger and a desire to just know God and, and, and be in his presence from a very young age. Yeah. 
That doesn't yes. mean you haven't been through trials right. and temptations, right, right mm -hmm. Michelle? Mm -hmm. All of us go through tough stuff when we have kids and family. Yes. But what happened then? You developed, you, where's your dad now? Is he still living? My dad passed away two years ago. Oh, okay. He just passed away. Um, he left back three churches that someone else took over. Three in churches? In Florida, in Florida, and in Georgia. Wow, well, Pastor Heard was lucky to get you for a wife. Yes. Oops, lucky is not a good word. He was blessed to get you as a wife. Yes. And so tell me something. Uh, how did you guys meet? Well, like I told you, I, I, I accepted Jesus at an early age. And um, it was during, I don't know, it just, I always felt that God had covered me, that I always had his, him just covering me. Even when I would make mistakes, I just always felt that he was there. And I remember praying and asking God, and I made a list of everything that I wanted in a man. And God led me to go into the military. I came here, this is my first duty station. You were in the military? Yes, ma'am. Which one, Marine? Uh, the Navy. Navy girl, yes. okay. And two months after I got here, I left my dad's house, Two months after I got in Hawaii, I, I found my husband. I found him. Um, in the um, He also was in the military, came here in the military. To leave your home with such a good father and go into the military, though, what was that like? I mean, because they brainwash you and break you down and make you what they want, make you, bake you, and whatever they want you to be, put you in a little mold. But you met your husband yeah, at I that met time. him two months after I got here. So I was like, oh, God, I didn't even have a chance to get, you know, out there, <laughs> even if I wanted to. You haven't been out to meet any other man, but yes, I'm glad you didn't. Yes. God does have a plan for women who love the Lord yes. and who even don't know the Lord. And if they'll wait. Yes. Don't cry, cry baby, I wrote once. Don't be blue. God has someone all picked out for you. The only trouble is, is we can't wait sometimes. We just got to find that mate and we got to get on its harmony and all this disharmony comes through its harmony and all this other stuff, it's pardon the pun. Anyway, you found two months and then... And then a was, year later we were married. Did he ride in on a horse, you know, um, the Prince of I don't know, he always peace? said that he was laying down and God told him to get up, go to McDonald's. <laughs> and I was actually, it was on a military base so, and I was walking to McDonald's and he saw me and my husband's so like a compassionate person. He saw me walking in the heat, you know, in the middle of summer and he, he just felt compelled to just pull over and give me a ride. And it was on a military base, so I, you know, felt, felt compelled. Safe. Well, that means that you yeah. were in a military outfit? Yes, well, I probably was, yeah, at that time. Whoa. So he just You must have over. been good looking, honey. Well, I don't <laughs> He pulled over and gave me a ride, and he was playing Christian music. And see, I had only been here for two months, and I was like, "Oh God, this is the closest to Christian since since I've been in Hawaii." You know, I hadn't seen any really godly, you know, people yeah, yet. Yeah. And he was playing his music, but he didn't say a word to me. And he and he took me to the exchange and very nicely, and I got out. And as soon as I got out, I was like, "Oh Lord." Please let me run into him again. Please let, I don't know who he was. I don't know his name. And then about two weeks later, I ran into him again in the parking lot where we lived. And he was walking. And he was, he was washing his car or something. Yeah. And then I went up to him and I said, I prayed that I would see you again. And then he said, when I said that, he knew yeah. I was his wife because he hadn't met a girl who prayed for, you know, to meet someone again like that. So, and, and that's, that was our, that's our journey. he was not bad looking either. Oh, you he watched Sons of Issachar. He wasn't on, bad looking. No, nice <laughs> tall. And he could have been coming in riding on a horse or in a car. He was a good looking young man yeah, at that but time. But it was all destined. It was just God, just that divine connection, that divine connection again. Divine connection. Yes. Oh, that, that is, mm -hmm. well, sure did. Mm -hmm. But did you have some natural children after too? Um, I had um, two natural children and then I lost a baby and then after that God gave me one more. His name is Isaac. Oh, yes. good. Because God, because I had had the two lost and then when I went, when I got pregnant again, the doctors had actually brought up abortion and I was like, no. And God told me, he said, I will, he told me, he said, I will provide, I will provide that ram and the bitch. You will not have to sacrifice this child. And that's when he gave me my child, Isaac. And that's why I called him Isaac, because God provided that ram in the bush for me. Every child that I've met that's hung around you and your husband is like a, a son or a daughter to you. You take them to your heart and you train them and teach them. And the one thing I love about our pastors, Randy and Pastor Hurd, your husband, that Eric, they 
love the Word of God and they put that Word into you to train you up. I think about how you've trained 65 young people up in the admonition of the Lord. And these children have come from all kinds of families. Foster children have the hardest times, I know, because my daughter married a young man who was a foster kid, and he was always hurting. He just was from home to home to home, and he didn't know how to be a father or a husband or what, because he just missed it on that way. Michelle, have you got anything you'd like to ask her? That was my other sister. That was my sister. That yeah, sure right the other sister. I like the three ways so you guys can see what we're doing too. It's just a, a when they're in the foster pe children, when they're in the homes, every family has a different idea of what discipline is and what the, the culture that they're dealing with and the, the social uh, interaction. Yeah. So it's all different. So that's what's hard on the fosters. What happened is that he was uh, disciplined in a really weird way where he was um, told to stand naked in a hallway with his arms up or something for an hour, some bizarre, weird torture. And so foster children are exposed to a lot of negative things, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. they're not all as sweet and kind as you are. Yes. And uh, it, it bruises the mind, their emotions, for quite a long time. But if they have Christ, we have that hope that all of those hurts can be put away all of the uh, wounds, it's like inner healing, they need healing, and they need lots and lots of love. And so you are gonna sing a song? Sure. Or did I miss something about you? How many years you've been married? I've been married, next year will be 25 years. Whoa, girl. That's a long time. And what's it been like? I, I know it's up and down and all around, yes, we know that. So what would you say that was like? But Being um, it, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been an awesome journey in God. And I think, I don't know, after 25 years, we're just really starting to gel and to become more and more one. But it's been an awesome journey. Just being in a two-parent home and, and having that foundation for my children and having a godly man who loves the Lord with all his heart, soul, and mind, it's just been a great, awesome blessing. Oh, awesome mm -hmm. is right. I was with a man for 56 years, my husband, not a man, and my husband. <laughs> and uh, I still had my ups and downs and a going around. But you know, God is good. Even as couples, if we'll seek the Lord, you know, if your husband's given you a problem, don't talk about it in front of the kids. Go into the restroom, pray to the Lord that God will touch your husband and take care of that. And you know what? God is faithful. He loves your husband more than you do, lady. I'm talking to the ladies. And you know, if your husband's looking good, it's because you gals have treated him like a king. Sometimes it's hard to treat a man like a king because they don't act like it. But you know what? The more you try and to please, as the Lord would have you to do, to love and respect and honor your husband, the more he will become like a king and he'll treat you like a queen. However, I have a little saying, as my sister gets up, she's gonna sing a song on healing. As my sister gets up, the saying is, lady, if you call your husband a stupid jerk, that will make you Mrs. Stupid Jerk. Okay, just a little. Laughter there, all right. <laughs> and here comes our dear lady to sing her song.
I believe you're all I need, Lord. That's all you have to say to God. I believe you're all that I'll ever need more than brother, sister, mother, dad, uncles, aunts, even more than your husband, dear one. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It doesn't say to trust in your husband or in people with all of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Lean into the word, the wisdom of the word and the understanding of the word. What God promises, he keeps. When he gives you a promise, he keeps his word. So get into the promises of the Lord, the word of God. Put your feet down into the word of God. Sometimes I feel like I'm on a surfboard. Oh, heaven help me. I've never been on a surfboard. <laughs> but at this age, too, I would not do well, Michelle. <laughs> but I feel like I'm on a, a surfboard. That'd be fun to see. You'll never I'd see like me. I'd like to see that. I'll surf in heaven, okay? Okay. All right. With your rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I almost brought a rabbit today. Now, no, we're getting off the subject. Uh, <clears throat> however, I have a rabbit habit. <clears throat> I have four rabbits. And you do have a rabbit habit. Yes, I do. A rabbit <laughs> habit. <laughs> but that's all right. They're lovely. That's good because in hospitals they use rabbits to... For therapy. That's right. Yeah. Therapy bunnies. <laughs> yeah. D uh, <laughs> what are the lop ear? For the big, big bunnies, they bring them in. The lop ear bunnies, the big bunnies. You have a bunny only a mother could love. That one... <laughs> kind of ugly, looks like a big prune face. But it used to be your bunny. It used bunny. to be my bunny. And you loved it. Well, I loved it for a while. <laughs> and that's another story. It's a good story. Uh, that one time I had just come back from operation of uh, pretty radical. And uh, I had the breast removed. And I brought little bunny, my little white bunny in. I was going to bring him, but I thought, well, I don't know, you know, if we could hold him down. You should have. Tie our Next bunny time, down. Tie your bunny down. <laughs> and I brought him in. I was lying in bed watching television, and I put him right here on my chest. It's, I was healing. I was still in a kind of a um, white powder from all the painkillers, you know, that they give you to help you to make the night this through. This is your little white bunny with My the little ruby white eyes. bunny, ruby eyes with red eyes. You call him Ruby, right? Ruby, I'll bring. You should. Her. It, whatever it is. And I set her on my chest and I fell asleep. And then I woke up and I realized Bunny hadn't moved one inch. Bunny was still sitting there looking at me <laughs> with two eyes. <laughs> and he was a faithful little bunny. He didn't hop away from me. He stayed. And you know what the Lord showed me through that bunny, girls? That it was like the Holy Spirit was with me day and night, day and night, Amen. watching over me Praise from Lord. that little tiny bunny. I know it's a funny bunny story. It's good. But you know something? We get into places where it's pretty hard sometimes, and we need to have a honey bunny, all right? My husband had Alzheimer's, so he was in uh, Arcadia at that time, so I didn't have a person always to be there. Michelle. Yes. That's I am going to say. Don't wear mm -hmm. it out. No, wear it out. This is the grab box. You grab a scripture, read it. This is the Roland box because it's always full of surprises. Yes. Like Roland on Zuka, who's right. watching this morning. Come quickly now. Come quickly. Read it and then tell me what you think. It says you are a fabulous daughter. That's true. That's true. Did I say that? <laughs> and a good chef. And an awesome cook. Yes. <laughs> don't drink too much. <laughs> no. It says don't drink too much wine, for many evils lie along that path. Be filled instead with the Holy Spirit and controlled by Him. Okay, can I say something? Of course I can. Ephesians or Ephesians. Be like filled with the excess of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It says don't be filled with the excess of wine that makes you only happy for a day and maybe you slop over into the night and you're not too happy for the rest of the time. But he said, be filled with the excess of the Holy Spirit. That's good. That's a lot. 
Yeah, that's, that's what gets you going places, right? Amen. Because the, when you're drunk, you can't control yourself and you make bad decisions. <laughs> and you don't use wisdom, right? I don't really drink, but I know this. I have friends that drink. <laughs> well, okay, any more? <laughs> So you picked a and dilly. you are a wonderful person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just silly. Uh, no, that's, that's it says something What's on the other side, but do we want the other side? What, is it bad? No, it says you, uh, yet again, you are a fabulous person. Well, I knew <laughs> that. I didn't have to read that to know that. So be careful, and I'm humble. That's one thing, too. So be careful how you act. These are difficult days. That's true. Don't be fools. Be wise. Make the most of every opportunity you have for doing good. That's good. So what would you say? Um, difficult days are that you're tested and a lot of people have drug addictions that they're fighting. I work with a psychiatrist here in this building and we have a lot of people that are trying to wean themselves off of drugs. And it's because you can do a drug and it makes you feel different than how you feel if you're hurting. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. He's the replacement of that drug that takes that pain away. And if we can teach people that, then we can free them from that bondage. But it's such a bondage that has such a tight hold on people. But that's the way all liquor is, and that's the way all drugs are. Even prescription drugs uh, that women can take, you know, that used to be Valium and different stuff. There's no value in Valium. There's no, it's, it's, it's a fix, a quick fix. But it's, the quickest fix is the Lord Jesus Christ. They say that one out of three Americans are taking a prescription drug or on an uh, illegal drug or non-prescribed -prescri drug. And those That's are a lot. the way that will bring you to destruction, to death. When we come into the Lord, we have wisdom to take care of our body. And possibly that person is on that drug because Satan is trying to take what their future was going to be. You know, they steal your future. If you're an alcoholic, maybe you were meant to be something really awesome in the Lord and Satan knew that and he just put that in there and that's what's messed you up. Yeah, and you see lots of young men and young women and older men and women, a lot of them a day, don't you, honey? And, and some people do need to be have medication because there is something a little bit off and their chemistry is off. We do live in a toxic society. Everybody has a different deficiency in their body. And you're studying to be a? Psychologist, a Christian psychologist. And we need more of them. Christian mm. women psychologists, Christian women lawyers, Christian women anything. We need, we have lots of Christian women yes. mothers. <clears throat> And that's you. That's me. <laughs> that's you. That's me. <laughs> and you had three beautiful <laughs> children, too. I'm so glad I had the children, though, because they mother became had, my friend. Mother had four children. She had three average children and one exceptional child. <laughs> I didn't say it was me. There wasn't any music behind that one, dear. <laughs> and... <laughs> Here's one for you to read. Another one. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22, 23. And what is self-control? Self-control is not eating that last Oreo. <laughs> in other words. Self-control is not buying that second haagen court that says chocolate on it. Chocolate. And so if we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. That means what we eat. Just think that the Holy Spirit has been around since the beginning of time. Or when Jesus left, he left the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus ascended and went to heaven, he said, I'm going to leave the great comforter for you. So this guy, Holy Spirit, has been around thousands and thousands of years, and he already gets what we're like, we're human beings, we have this that we do wrong, we have this that we do right, the tendencies that we do. So he surely knows what comfort we need, what encouragement we need, and all those things. Isn't that right, interesting? Right, right. When God said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit did it. Yeah, Everything. done. The it's Holy already done. done. So you want to ask the Lord to give you light into your own life. And because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit here right, right. now. And it we can send church. it. We can send the Holy Spirit too. Holy Spirit, go and comfort my sister right now. I can't go to California and wrap my arms around yes. her. Her husband just died. She's a widow. I need that help. In the Bam, name, in the name of, in Jesus. of Jesus. 
We have, we have not been taught enough about how to warfare against the enemy. You don't just bring people into the Lord and then leave them helpless. Bye. See ya. There's the Bible. See ya. <laughs> Go, God, God be with you. Go with you and be blessed. But don't, we have to teach them not only salvation to confess the Lord, but how to fight the enemy. Warfare. We are in the army of the Lord. I know we don't look like an army, but we are. We are in the army of the Lord, and the army of the Lord is raising up all over the earth, in China, in Africa, all over the place. Hey, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. That just irks the devil. When you say the name of Jesus, right? Yes. In the name of the most precious name of Jesus, be gone, Amen. Satan. It's power. And in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers me. When you get scared, it says, I didn't give you the spirit of scared. I haven't given you the spirit of fear, <laughs> but a power of and love and a That's sound right. mind. Right, and right. so you just say, yeah. okay, now I've got power and love and a sound mind in me. So I'm not going to fear. Get out in the name of Jesus. Well, um, don't you also think that on, on TV right now, and my mom is a riot, she calls television television because there's so much CRAP on it. It's just murder, cut, you know, uh, homosexual, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything is on it. But I still there's... call CRAP stuff. Yeah, stuff. Okay, okay. so That's... I'm going to edit okay, that. Stuff. Okay, that was good. <laughs> um, so, but there's a show that I like to watch that has, um, like, it's a ghost hunter kind of thing because it just, like, tickles me to watch it because they're hunting after the ghost, you know, just like um, on Bugs Bunny, we must go find the ghost, you know, wait, where was the wascally wabbit? Where's the wascally ghost, you know? And so this guy's got black hair and it's all yeah. going this funny direction. And he's like, we're going to find the ghost now. We're walking in. They turn off all the lights. They put on their special, you know, lens so they could see at night. You know that special, whatever. And they're, they have their special EEP or whatever, and they're going to record the ghost talking later. They're going to come back and check it out. And they're like, oh, did you hear that? It just said something. Uh, it scratched me. It did this. I'm like, duh, nah, you know, no. I, those are the spirits that are on the earth that are from heaven that decided, they said, we don't want God. Forget it. We're out of here. They left with Lucifer. They're on the planet. Those are the dark angels, or we fallen like to angels. just call them fallen angels. Yeah. We call them. Don't want to scare you. Demons. And so he's just following demons. We're like, when are you going to get a clue? You're following a spirit. You, you ain't. We're, whereas we follow the, the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit. Yeah. The right. Holy Spirit the of Holy God. Ghost, the, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Hunters and the ghost adventurers. So there's a spirit of fear attached to that show. So you feel scared when you're watching it because it's the unknown. And that's one of Satan's favorite tools is the spirit of fear. So how do you get rid of the spirit of fear? Anybody? The Word of God. Right. You just say, Satan, I bind you. I bind that spirit of fear, and I cast you to the pit of hell. Leave me alone. You're not going to bother me. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus, for watching that show and freaking myself out <laughs> late at night, even though my doors are locked, my curtains pulled, and I have my blankie around my neck. So, <laughs> and your kitty cat. <laughs> So, right, Mom, that stuff on TV, it freaks Christians out because they're, and even people that aren't Christians, because they know that there's something in the other dimension, but they're not sure. Mm -hmm. Even in our spirit, we know, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if we don't believe in God, that there's something we can't explain, Ooh. some energy. And there is an energy. What it's, have you got to say? We might let you have a word in it. Should anyways. we? I think we should. Go. I mean, I just think as human, human beings, we're just naturally curious of the unknown and the mysterious and things that we shouldn't get into we want to delve delve you know delve into anyway supernatural so the supernatural stuff. we just kind of you know caught up with the supernatural anyway yeah. by just nature yeah. but yeah it, it's a carnal thing though mm -hmm. and it can become an appetite right it yes, says an here addiction an addiction an addiction if we are living now by the holy spirit's power let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives, not the unholy spirit, okay? Then we won't need to look for honors and popularity, which leads to jealousy and hard feelings. Galatians 5, 25, 26. Mm. So be careful how you act. These are difficult days. Don't be fools. Be wise. Make the most of every opportunity you have for doing good. Ephesians 5, 15, 16. I want to read, we've got a little bit of time 
Liv, that was very good, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. Ten points. Ten human points. The Lord asked me one day, he said, if you would just let go, dear, the Spirit of God, ask me. If you would just let go, dear, and I wrote it down. Spoke to my heart and I write it down. Listen, dear heart, this could be a word for you. My dear, if you would just let go and let me handle your affairs entirely, I would smooth out your day-to-day -day priorities. I am so involved in your most intimate details, life details. God is involved and he cares about us intimately, all right? I am closer and dearer than any friend. I have, sharped, I have shaped your life more than mother or father. I have molded you through your partner in life. That was my husband, and I got a lot of molding, but that's okay. <laughs> I gave him some scolding. He gave me some molding, okay? Oh, you don't do that kind of stuff right. <laughs> I have molded you through your partner in life. I have stretched you out and continue to expand your mind and strength. You think you are in control when it is I, the Lord, who is in absolute control since you gave over the reins of your life to me. Remember when you got born again? He said, I give you my rights, Lord. My child, all I have <clears throat> proposed to happen is to shape you, not misshape you. God allows things to come into our life we get all out of shape about, but it's to shape us up, really. There are no mishappenings here. You are valuable and important to me, my dear. Each individual that I created in the, is of the utmost importance to me, only they don't realize it. What is truly important is that I, your Lord, become all important in your life. Let me be all consuming and let your desire be to, to surrender to me and let me have my will every minute of your day in every small way. I can work out all those depressions and appetites that drive you crazy. I shall use them for my benefit. You shall become a silent listener and I'll speak. Well, the thing is, the Lord is always speaking to us, but we're not always listening. Yeah? And I was listening to the Lord and this is what he gave me. For a change, I was listening, all right? You ask why, Lord, and I answer you in a way that you'll know. I'll direct your thoughts and ways in the clearing of your house to the caring of your body and of your family. Yield yourself, dear, to the shaping of my hands. I am molding you each moment of your life. Remember, church is not some place you enter into like a building. We are church, you and me together, or two or three of you. I am the head of that church. The word, the gifts, the signs, and miracles are for every moment of every day. Let me work through you by the power of my spirit. And you are never alone, my child. I am there deep within the very fiber of your being. I am what holds you together and puts you together every day. I am your breath. Let go, my child, and let me do the driving. I am so intimately interwoven into your life and very being that I can control your worldly appetites. I can even control the amount of food that you want to decide to eat. As you listen to my Holy Spirit guide, I can supply the right vitamins and all the right nutrients. Just let go and let me do it for you. God has a plan for your life, lady, a great plan and a destiny for all of us. I have not fulfilled my destiny, and maybe you haven't either. So ask the Lord, what is your plan for my life? And he'll say, my plan is that you have Christ come into your heart and abide there and love you into a new creative life. If any man or woman be in Christ, behold, there are new people. And that's what's happening to you. You want a high? Get the high in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord. Ask Him to come and give you His joy, His peace, His long-suffering, and He will give you all that you ask for. And I want to thank you for coming today, and I want to thank you, Angela, for thank coming. You for me. And thank, thank you, you Michelle, nice even though you're you. swell nice and the best you. kid, yeah, right I say, come back and see me sometime. Possibly, maybe. All right. I'll see what's on my calendar. All right. We love you. 
we ask of the Lord Jesus Christ, come and fill your heart and flood your day out with joy. So we're going out with the joy of the Lord and we say bye-bye now. Don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Word of God and go to church. Thank you now. Bless you. to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget. And my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Call 800-593-1862 now. Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Becker, and this is my wife, Cindy. On our show, Your Health, we believe information is one of the best tools we have to maintain good health and change your life. Join us every day for Your Health on KWHE, Hawaii's choice for Ohana television. Nothing has changed my life more or drawn me closer to God than understanding the generosity of God in my life. Nothing has opened my heart more than learning to live and give back to God by faith. God will not judge us by how much or how little we've accumulated during our earthly lives, but he will judge us by how well we have managed it. The charitable gift annuity is an excellent tool to demonstrate faithful giving and wise stewardship all at the same time. While making a large donation, investing into the lives of the lost souls of the world, helping to bring the gospel to them, you will receive a generous lifetime fixed income guaranteed for the rest of your life. I invite you to learn more about this amazing opportunity. Contact us today, and when you do, ask for my book, Wealthy and Wise, which I'll send to you just for asking. It will literally change your life. You're watching KWHE TV 14 Honolulu, KWHD TV 14 Hilo, and KWHM TV 21 Wailuku. The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Exodus 3, starting in verse 19. And I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless forced to do so. No, not by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand, God says, and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in it. And after that, then the king will let you go. And I will give this people favor and respect in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you go, you shall not go empty handed. But every woman, I love this, every woman shall insistently solicit of her neighbor and of her that may be residing at her house, jewels and articles of silver and gold. And you shall take it and put it on your sons and daughters. <laughs> I like this. And you shall strip the Egyptians of the belongings that are due you. God said, I'm calling you out of that place of bondage. And not only that, I want you to take away all the good stuff from the enemy and I want you to put it on and I want you to enjoy it because it's my children that ought to have it anyway. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Moses answered, <laughs> but behold, they're not going to believe me. <laughs> they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to obey my voice. For they will say, <laughs> Oh, Moses, the Lord has not appeared.
to you. Can you imagine how tired God gets <laughs> of trying to find somebody that will just have enough guts and courage?